This is the application we made where we made a rectangle, an oval, and text. Here I'll go to that program. Here is the program we made. We learned how it could make a rectangle, an oval, and text. Now we're going to turn this into a routine by putting a tab in front of it. So we're going to add another instruction. Here it is, tab, and tab zero. Tab zero would be the first tab that we could place in subprogram one. So here I'm going to put that tab marker above the set here. So it's the beginning of our routine is tab zero. Now I want to show you something. If I go here and make another instruction, a home instruction, and put it above the tab, now when subprogram one starts, it goes home right away, which means it goes back to the main program. If we execute it now, nothing happens anymore because the main program calls subprogram one subprogram one starts with a home instruction it goes back to the main program and exits so we now though want to be able to run tab zero which is in subprogram one in order to do that we got to go back to the main program Instead of saying just call subprogram 1, we're going to update this instruction to say 100, zero, zero, which says subprogram 1, tab 0. So we enter that in there and we replace it into the main program. Now when we execute it, look, it know, knew where to go. Because in the main program we said, go to subprogram run and one and run the zero tab. And if we go to subprogram one, there we see there's tab zero. So we have made our little program now into a routine that can be called by the main program by saying what subprogram and what tab number. The tabs can go from 0 to 99. So let's show how we could get another routine from another application. Now there is an application called Routines that has many routines in it that we can copy. So I'm going to go from here and tab to that program called Routines. Here it is, the program called Routines. In it there are just lists of many routines. For instance, if I click on the first one, ah, that's what this routine here does. Then I just click anywhere on the screen and I go and look at the next one. Oh, that one moves. I click it off and go to the next one. Ah, and then I go to the next one. And I go to the fifth one called Curve Lines 5. And I say, okay, I like that. I wish that would be in my app. But I think, well, where is this located? And I don't know. So what I do is there's a special feature called Trail. Trail will show the actions being executed by this program. So I'm going to hit Trail. And after the first nine instructions, it hasn't got anywhere. I'm going to ask for another nine. Ah, now it's in its subprogram 1 around instruction 80. Now, if I keep increasing this, let me increase it by 90 instructions. 
90 more, 90 more, <laughs> 90 more. I'll increase it by 900 more. But first I want to pay attention to where it is again. It's in sub-program 1 and instructions in the 80s. Now I'm going to run nine, advance at 900 instructions. Another 900, another 900. Oh, now it's at the end. So on this execution of the program, it just built this much of this semicircle. As you remember, this went around like that, but it did it slowly, and here's just did so much of it. All right, so now I know where it is at. It's in subprogram 1, 80, and the 90s. Okay, I'm going to turn the trail off. I'm going to go to the program. And I'm going to say I want to be in subprogram one. I'm going to turn off the green boxes. And I want to go to lines 80. Oh, well, down here it says we're in 265. So here's the position bar for the program. So I'm going to go up here somewhere and see how close to 80 I am. Well, this is 62 to 99. So that is where it's at. And here it says. Curve lines number five. Well, I want to put that into my application, so I'm going to put those instructions in a green box. Then I'm going to come over here and say, Save the green lines. Now, to get them over to the other one, I have to store them on the hard drive. So here I'm going to say store the green lines. Now I can go back to my application. Here's my subprogram one. I'm going to highlight the last line. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go get those lines stored on the hard drive. Place stored lines in paste saved. Now they moved over here. Now I'm going to paste them below the yellow line. There they are. Now there's one thing I don't like about it is because it calls this tab 5, but it's going to be my tab 1. So I wish to update this line. So I click the line under update. I go up to the line and I say, well, I don't want it to have a label, so wipe that out. Tab is right. I don't want it to be tab 5. I want it to be tab 1. Enter that. I don't want that PG there, so I'm going to wipe that out. So now I simply have, as I replace it, I replaced it. Now it simply says tab 1. But when I execute, my main program is only going to go to tab 0. Oh, so I want to go now to the main program and tell it, no, I want you to go to subprogram 1, all right, but to tab 1. So I'll replace that with call 101. Now when I execute it, look at that. I have a new routine in my program that I got from the application called Routines. Now I'll go back to the program. I'll go back to subprogram one. I'm going to advance it up a little bit. Boom, up there. And now I'll go get another one. All right, so. I'm going to go to the program called Routines. I'm going to tab to it. Here it is. I'm going to execute it. I'm going to just click on it here. Now I'm going to go down here and look at some more routines. Here's some, some lines. That's line one. There's line two. Here's line three. Line four, ah, who waves? And line five. All right, we'll continue on. Now we have ovals, ovals one, ah, it does that. The second oval routine, third oval routine, fourth oval routine, the fifth oval routine. 
Oh, that one's nice. Makes them go around in a circle. All right. So I want to copy that one. I like that one. I want to put that in my app. Well, I have to find out where it is. So I go up to the trail and I'm going to follow the trail. I can advance nine at a time. Oh, and they're already built one of the ovals. Another one, another one. So this must be where the ovals are being built. Subprogram one, around the 270s, 280s. So I'll stop the trail. I'll go to the program. I still want to be in subprogram one of routines, but now I want to go to the 270s. Well, I'll jump down here on my bowl. All right. Oh, we're at ovals three. Down here, I can advance it on the arrow here. And, oh, now I see ovals five. If I go in the inner part of the advance arrow, I'm just going to move it a little bit. So now ovals five, which is two seventies, and you see this goes from two fifty five to two ninety two, and right here is what we want. So we're going to put it in a green box by clicking the top left and the bottom right. There it is. We're going to save the green lines, store them to the hard drive. Now we're going to go back to my application and we're going to highlight this home which is the end of our subprogram one. Then we're going to go get the stored lines and paste them below there. All right now again we notice well this doesn't really say what we want it to say. So we're going to click here under update and we're going to white out that. I don't want to label. Tab is fine. It's not going to be number 15, but it's going to be 02. Tab 2. Enter it. We don't want that PG, so we're going to white that out. Now we're going to replace that down there. So now we have a tab 1 and a tab 2. Well what we can do now is we want to execute this so we go back to our main program where it says call 101 we want to change that to 102. Enter it. Replace it back as 102. Now when we execute it now we also have the routine that twirls the ovals. Okay, so that can be placed uh, in our application somewhere and run by the main program. So again, we'll go back to program, we'll go to our subprogram one, we'll advance it up, and we can get ready and we're going to highlight home again. And then we're going to go to the program called Routines again and see if we can get another one we like. All right, here it is. We're going to execute it. Click on this so that stops and goes to their main page. Okay, we were at ovals 5. Now it's going to do rectangles. Well, there's one. It's another. Oh, that was nice. There's another one. Oh, stretch them out. Show them in a circle. Well, show them in a circle moving. Well, that was pretty much like our circle of ovals. So I don't think we want that one. So we're going here. These are called polygons. Polygons number one shows you a bunch of polygons. Number two, ah, special polygons. Number three, ah, polygons changing. Number four, Two polygons twirling next to each other. Number five. Oh, two polygons twirling. Well, I like that. I'd like to have that in my application. So, what I need to do is find out where it is again. So, I go up the trail here. I say, well, let's say go 90 instructions. Where is it at? It's in subprogram two. Around.
Sound Prog Instructions 2633. Well, let's turn trail off. We know we want to go to the program, subprogram 2, and some low instructions. Let's see, these are instructions 4 to 41. So it must be here. Well, there it is, Polygon 5. So we're going to click here, click down here. All right, that goes from the tab to home. That's what we want. We come over here and say, save those green lines, store them on the hard drive. Then we come up here and go tab back. Now we're back to our program which now what we're going to do is place the stored lines at paste saved which is here and paste them below the yellow line well here's the next one again we have to click here now notice up here it says update when you click a line underneath the update heading it brings the line whoop, wrong line brings the line up here to be updated Again, we don't want it to have a label, so we wipe that out. We want the tab. We don't want it to be two. <laughs> Close, but no cigar, because it's three. Enter that. White out that PG. Replace that line. Now we have a tab three. Well, you know, we have to go back to the main program and say, well, now I want you to call three so three e replace it execute it oh now we have the two polygons rotating you can't much see the one in the back <laughs> you just see the tips of it going around all right so now we have another routine in my app and so now we're going to go back to subprogram one. We'll advance it again. We'll get ready by highlighting the last line of subprogram one. And now we'll go back to the application called routines. Now we're back there. That shows what we copied last time. Let's execute it. Just click on the screen. And we'll go back to the listing. And that was polygon five. Now we have stars. Ah, well, there's a bunch of stars. We click. Ah, there's the star that changes the number of points. Here's a circle of stars. Here's stars rotating. And star five. Oh, my gosh. Randomly place stars of different colors. Well, I like that. I like to include that in my application. But first I have to find out where it is. So I can copy it. So I go to the trail. And let's say, let's go 90 instructions. Ah, it's already made some of the stars. So it's making the stars in subprogram 2, well, around 100. So we'll leave the trail. We'll go to the program. Now we were in subgram subprogram two already, so now we just have to go on down until we find stars five, or we find out that these numbers down here are around a hundred. Okay, now we just started in the hundred, so I'm going to click it one more time. Ah, there it is, star five. This is the routine that made those random stars. So I'm going to click there. Click down here. Now I got it in the green box. I can save those green lines, but I have to store them to the hard drive so I can retrieve them in my application. So I store them. I go back to my application. I tell my application to get those stored lines. And then I tell it to paste them below the yellow line. Well, there they are. Now we know we've got to change this. The last tab we had was tab 3. So we're going to change this to tab 4. It has a label, so we want to get rid of that label. 
tab is fine. We want to change this to 4. And we want to white out that. Then we replace it. Well, now we have a tab 4 in subprogram 1. We want to execute it, so we have to go back to sub, well, to the main program and change that to 104. 4, E, replace it. There we go. Now we can say execute it. Now we have a routine that puts stars on the screen of random positions and of random colors. Well, that's going to be nice in our application. Well, now what we can do, we'll go back to the program, back to our subprogram 1, and we're going to advance it up. We'll highlight home again, which is the last line, and we'll go to routines program again. There's where we copied from it last time. Now we're going to execute it. We're going to click anywhere here on the screen to make that go away and bring back the main program. Here's characters 1, characters 2. Oh, it goes through the characters. Characters 3, characters 4, characters 5. Well, that's just letters. I don't think I really need to have that, so I'll click off that one too. Overlay 1, oh, outline stars. Overlay 2, outline polygons. Overlay 3, bunch of outlines. Overlay 4, that's interesting in that it shows transparent colors, semi-transparent colors. So that might be a nice one to have. But let's go see what the last one is. Overlay 5. Oh, that puts a picture on the screen and then puts a rectangle around it that changes its transparency. Well, that's just another thing about being transparent. Let's go on. That's done with overlays. Now we're going to start with borders. Oh, all different kind of borders you can put around things. See number two. Alright, that's like a special border. Number three. Number four. Number five. Well, I don't know I need any of those. Hmm. The next one is how to flip a picture. Ah, uh, well. You can flip the picture one way or the other way. Ah, here you can show something and show it fading away. Well... I don't need that. And number five. Ah, shows the blurring of a picture. Well, that's interesting. But we don't need that. Here's one called morphing. Oh, one polygon morphs into another. That's interesting. Let's see the other ones. Oh, a star morphing into a box. Oh. The letter E morphs into the letter F. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, here's the letter I becoming the letter J. Oh. And here is <laughs> an F turning into something else. A fleur-de-lis. All right, and so as you can see, there are many more routines that we could take from this program, well, application called Routines. Well, there is even another program that contains lots of routines. And we're going to go up here now, and we're going to go to it. It's called Trail. This is how Trail starts. And over here in the last two columns, there are routines. Let's check to see what they look like. Well, here's one that changes the size of an oval 
Here's one again that shows about transparency. Here's one that shows random ovals, but I don't need one of those. So I'll go to another possibility. Hmm, yeah, I'll click the X. Not excited about those. Try this. Well, it shows different shapes, but I don't need those different shapes. Here it says it shows ASCII characters. Here it shows branch on condition. Well, I'm not really interested in that. Oh. And more patterns. Oh, there's an interesting thing. Let me click on this one. See, it keeps showing eight at a time. I'm going to click on that one. I kind of like that. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, if I want to copy it, I have to know where it is. It shows me the program over here, but I want to copy it so I can put it into my application. So I click on Trail. Well, let's go 90 instructions. Ah, okay, 90 instructions. We're in the making of it. So it's in subprogram 2, and line 335, somewhere in there. Turn the trail off. I'm going to go to subprogram 2 and trail and find those 300s. I'll click in the middle of my pole here. Uh, well, I'm close to it. I'll click up here. Oh, wait, I want to be in the 300s. And I can't, hold on a second. Well, I had to stop because I wasn't sure where to make my green box. But I went back and looked at the, at the trail and found that this is where it's at because it was running a subroutine at DG and here's DG so this is the part I want to copy we'll know for sure when we get it over to the other side <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say save those green lines store them on the hard drive I'm going to go back to my application there, I'm going to place the stored lines in paste save, and now I'm going to paste them underneath the yellow line. So now I got to change this. The last tab I had was four. This is going to be tab five. So I put tab five up there. Well, they called it 19. I make it five. Zero, five, E. And I white out that PG and I replace that down there. Now we have to see what our if our luck holds out we're going to go to the main program we're going to tell it now that we want it to run subprogram 1 tab 5. Put e in there replace it and see what happens. There you go. Amen. There it is. Alright so we know that there's places that we can go and get routines but the truth is we can go to any other application and get routines. Okay for now.